Hi everyone, my name is Marinko Spasovic and in this video I will talk about the Reaper pattern and how you can implement it in your API project. The Reaper pattern is a design pattern that emphasizes the design of APIs around endpoints instead of controllers. It should help with the organization of the endpoints in our APIs, making them easier to locate, navigate and modify. The Reaper pattern suggests that we define each endpoint in our application as an individual class with each class having a single method to handle incoming requests. With this pattern, endpoints serve as the fundamental building blocks of our projects. As usual, if you like the video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps me a lot and supports this channel as well. Now, let's continue with this topic. When we implement the Reaper pattern, our application should have three main components. Request, Endpoint and Response. Here, as you can see, a request comes in from the client. Then we handle it at the endpoint stage and finally return a response. There are multiple ways we can implement this pattern, either by using manual implementation or with the help of third-party libraries. For this project, I will use a Nugget package named Fast Endpoints. That said, let's install it. This is a great package with lots of functionalities integrated and you will see a few of those in this video. Now, before I continue, I would like to let you know about the products. As you can see, we have just published our new microservices course as an addition to our Ultimate Web API and Blazor WebAssembly courses. So feel free to check out our new platform and all the courses there. Ok, to continue, I have to register this library inside the program class. To add the fast endpoint services to a service collection, I will call the add fast endpoints method. Also, I will call the use fast endpoints method to add it to the application's pipeline. With this, the package is ready to process our requests. Now, with the registration done, I will create a first endpoint inside the endpoints folder. I will also add the books folder to organize all my endpoints related to this entity. Lastly, let's create a new class and name it book get all endpoint. The first thing I will do here is to inherit from the endpoint without request class and I will provide only response type, which is the list of books. Fast endpoint provides several different abstract classes that we can inherit depending on the use case we have for the current endpoint. At this time, I am using the last option. Now, I want to access my fake database, so I need a private read-only field named db. And let's use a construct injection here. I will make it a one-liner. Now, to add some configuration, I have to override the configure method. Here, I will set the route for this endpoint using the get method with the route as an argument. And I also want to allow unauthenticated users to access this endpoint. Ok, with the configuration done, let's override one more method here named handle async. And I need here the async keyword as well. Inside the method, I will collect a list of books by calling my get all books method. And then just call the send async method with the books and the cancellation token as arguments. This method sends the list of books back to the client as a response with the appropriate status code 200. Well, that's all I need, so let's run the app and test this with Postman. As you can see, I have a list of books returned and the 200 OK status code. Now, just one more thing regarding configuration. If you don't want to configure the route and the authorization using the configure method, you don't have to do it that way. You can simply use the HTTP attribute with the route provided and also the allow anonymous attribute. This will produce the same result. I will hide these attributes now and continue using the configure method. With this done, let's continue with the get by ID endpoint. So, I will first create the share folder and inside it 
the book details folder and then the get by id folder here i want to create two records as details for the request and response the first one will be the book by id request i will make it a record and provide a single id parameter next let's add one more class name it book by id response and make it a record as well additionally i will provide a string book property as the parameter once i have my request and response objects i can create a new endpoint class and name it book get by id endpoint this time I will inherit from the endpoint abstract class using both the request and the response parameters. Then again, I need my private field to access the repository method and also a constructor to inject the service. Let's make it a one liner. Now, to remove this error, I need a required namespace, and there we go. As in the previous endpoint, I will override the configure method and provide the endpoint URI with the get method as API books ID and also allow anonymous users to hit this endpoint. Finally, I need to override the handle async method and provide the async keyword. Now, I want to fetch a single book from the repository using the get book by id method and for the argument i will use my request dto and call the id property then i can check if the book is null and if it is i can await the send not found async method to return the 404 status code to the client otherwise i will use the send async method and create a new book by id response object as the response body with a string argument where I will concatenate the book id property and the name property. As you can see by now, this implementation is very similar to CQRS pattern using the mediator library. Of course, if you're not familiar with that pattern, I strongly recommend watching my videos on that topic. The links will be in the description below. Okay, with all this prepared, I can run the app and test it with Postman. So let's fetch the book with the ID too. And there we go. We have a correct result. Now for the post request, I can repeat the familiar steps. So let's first create a new post folder inside the book details folder. And then the two required classes. I will name the first one create book request. I want to modify it to be a record and add a single string name property. For the response, I need one more class named create book response. And the process is almost the same. I will make it a record and this time provide two parameters DID and the name. Then, as usual, I need the endpoint class named book post endpoint. This class will again inherit from the endpoint abstract class using both the request and the response parameters. Then I need the construct injection and the configuration as in the previous endpoints. Just this time, I'm setting up the post endpoint. Now, let's override the handle async method. Add the async keyword. And then create a new book by calling the create book method, where I will pass a new book argument with the name property set from the request.name property. 
After that, I need my response prepared. So let's create a new create book response record using the book ID and the name properties. Finally, I will await the send created at async method, which should generate the header link to my get by ID endpoint. And I need to provide a new object for the route values, in this case ID, then the response, and finally the cancellation token. Great, this is all ready, so let's run the app and test this. Let's send this post request, and as soon as it is done, we can see our created object and the 2 1 status code. Also, inside the headers tab, we can find the route to our new book. Awesome! So, this is how you implement the Reaper pattern using the Fast Endpoints library. But I want to show you one more thing the library provides for us validation. To introduce validation to our project, I will create a new validators folder. And inside a new class named book validator. This class must inherit from the validator base class using the request object as the parameter we want to validate. Now I need a constructor, and inside I will add a simple validation requiring a non empty request object with a minimum length of 5 characters. As you can see in the namespace, the fast endpoints package already provides the fluent validation package for us. We don't have to install it manually. And that's all it takes. Let's run the app again and test the validation. If I send a request with just test as the book's name, you can see validation in action. But what I would like to fix here is the status code. This is an unprocessable entity and the status code should clearly stay that. Well, to fix this, I will first inform the package not to throw the error if validation fails. And then inside the method, since I don't have any other custom validation checks, I will call the throw if any errors method and provide the status code as an argument using the HTTP status code enumeration. Of course, I'm using the unprocessable entity value. Great, I can test this again. And you can see the same response, but this time with a more accurate status code. Excellent. I must admit, this is a very interesting approach to building APIs, and it provides a lot of flexibility. On the other hand, I can see a lot of developers complaining about the increased amount of files that we need to manage, and thus making the project even more complex. To be honest, I would really like to hear your opinion on this one. Anyway, if you liked the video and found it useful, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and the bell button to receive notifications of my future videos. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for new ones to come. Until then, all the best.